Hey everyone and welcome back. This is Iris CTF 2024. Uh, overall, super great CTF. Uh, it was a lot of fun last year and it was fun this year too. Um, sadly, I don't have too much time this year. Uh, we're in Japan right now and to be honest, I'm pretty tired. Um, so I only had time to do two of the challenges. Uh, so I'll be covering the insanity check, which was the baby chow for binary exploitation and then uh, serious banking. Um, and with that, let's get started. The first pwn challenge was insanity check by Lambda. It says, I tried the brand new Michael LD linker on my Hello World program. I'm pretty sure it's super safe now. We're given a netcat port and a download file. Uh, this challenge was a little bit cheeky. Um, basically, uh, there's going to be a function at a weird address, and that address is just happens to be perfect for this buffer overflow. Uh, otherwise, this challenge would have been possible. But basically, the trick to this program or this challenge was realizing that a specific function was moved into a very specific spot. Um, and so when we do the buffer overflow, we can align things correctly. Uh, but taking a look at the program, thankfully we're given C code, which is always very much appreciated. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to read in a name, uh, and that's 64 bytes. Uh, it's going to do some stripping on it. Then it's going to build out this message. So the message is 128 bytes. It's going to do hi there, and then our name, and then the suffix, which is welcome to IRCTF. If you have any questions, you can contact us, contact us at test at example.com. Um, so if you add everything up, uh, when it builds out this message, the message will be over 128 bytes. Um, if you put in a long name. Uh, the tr problem is that uh, I think pi was enabled. Um, and so you can start, you know, maybe doing a single byte overwrite. Uh, but what's weird is the end of the message ends with these like four null bytes, um, which means you can't really do like a single byte overwrite or like, you know, just mess with the last byte to get like a relative jump. Um, and uh, there really just isn't too much attack surface. Um, but like I said, the trick is if you look at it in Ghidra, um, so we can look at the main function. Uh, the main function here, it has address like 400842, which is, you know, pretty common, uh, 440. And if we look at the rstrip function, you know, it's like 407f6. But then if we look at the win function, its address is like all the way up here. And you might notice these uh, hex characters look a little bit suspicious. Um, so if we take it over to CyberShop, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And we do from hex and like a reverse. Um, it happens to be at address.com. Um, and if we look at the suffix uh, message, we can see it ends in .com. <laughs> so this right here is technically the address of win. Um, so for this baby challenge, all we were supposed to do is just like push this buffer enough so that this, this .com 000 overwrites the return address on the stack and you win. Um, so that's pretty much it. So if we take a look at the salt script, uh, all standard pwn tool stuff, um, we'll run it locally first. Uh, I'm going to attach GDB just to show how you can calculate how many bytes you need to send. Um, I'm going to send 63 bytes using Pwn Cyclic uh, just to see where that offset is. Um, and yeah, Python 3, solve that pi. Um, so I'm going to hit continue. So we're, we returned from the function and we clobbered the return address that's on the stack. Um, so the current return address on the stack is example.com. Um, if we remember, we want .com null null null. Um, so there's a bunch of null bytes over here, and we only want this. That means we pushed it too far by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven bytes too far. So if we subtract seven here, oops, and we rerun it, Python three solve. Do it continue. We can see it's spawn shell. So um, it was trying to cat out the flag, but the flag uh, doesn't exist. Um, so it's working. That's all we needed to do. So we can connect to remote. Let's get rid of everything else. Python 3 solve, and we get the flag. It says Iris CTF convenient symbol placement. So, fun. The next challenge is serious banking, also by Lambda. It says we just rolled out the beta for our new terminal banking service. Registering at the moment couldn't tell you to a 35 initial bonus in your account. Limited account slots are available. We're given a netcat port and a download file. Um, this challenge really wasn't too bad. It was just like uh, stringing together a lot of little things and just like uh, finding those little things. Um, but like I said, it really wasn't too bad. Uh, the bugs in this program. Actually, I'll just a quick overview of this challenge. Um, it's going to give you a menu. You can create an account. An account just has a structure that looks like this. Um, nothing too exciting. You can show an account, which just prints out those values, create a transaction so you can send money in between the two accounts. Deactivate account, which just flips a flag. Create a support ticket, which uh, combines some buffers together and exits. Um, so uh, the bugs in the challenge. Uh, the obvious one is in create a support ticket. Um, so if we go down to that, uh, it's going to concatenate a bunch of buffers together, and you get a very obvious buffer overflow. Um, it'll take some account name and add it to some buffer, uh, and this will clobber the stack. 
um, and eventually overwrite some return address. Now the problem is at this point you don't have any info leaks, uh, so we need info leaks. Um, this took qu quite a while for me to find. Um, I think I am just very tired. Uh, but to get the info leak, we're going to be abusing this printf separator. Um, it doesn't look like this is modifiable. Um, it is strange that they're doing a printf separator here, like we should have known better. Like it should be a percent %s or something like that. Um, it just seems very strange. And also, uh, it's like created down here. Um, it's going to create separators, just 126 uh, underscores. Um, it all seems fishy. I just couldn't figure out how to touch it. And uh, how we're going to touch it is uh, this challenge creates uh, 256 accounts. And each account, uh, you can create up to 256 accounts. Uh, and each account gets an ID from this ID counter. Uh, you might notice that it's a uh, car, which is a signed. Um, so that means ID counter, it's going to go from like 0 to 127 or 128, and then it's going to be a negative number. It'll be like negative 128, and it goes back down or back up. Um, so because of that, uh, when we create new accounts, um, eventually some accounts are going to have a negative ID. Uh, and so that's very strange. I think everything else was, had typecasting correctly. It was just this ID counter, which was strange. It's also strange that there's an account count and an ID counter. There's like two different variables keeping track. Um, so that kind of plays into the bug. But like I said, eventually we're going to have IDs that are negative. And so then when we do the transfer function, um, it's going to ask us which account we want to transfer from. So we can say, yeah, I want to transfer from account zero. What account do you want to transfer to? Um, in here, you can say account, I think I was saying 128 um, or maybe 129, one of those. Uh, it's going to check that both of those are valid bigger than the account account, um, which they are. Account account, well, at that point, I think I said, I, I think I make 130 accounts, and then I'm going to do transfers between account 0, and I think it was 128. Uh, then we say how much we want to transfer. Every account by default has 35. Then it's going to find those two accounts, the from and to. It's going to make sure there's enough balance. But then when we look here, it's going to use the ID field from the account. And like I said, on account 128, I think, uh, this ID is actually negative, um, and it's negative like 128. So it's going to do accounts, and then it's going to access minus 128 dot balance and subtract the amount. Um, so at this point, we need to look in the heap, uh, which we can do. Uh, it was from ID, oops, uh, which we can do. But when we look in the heap, we're going to find out that uh, do to do. Uh, this is the heap um, above accounts is this debug log, which is just a separator that was very nicely put in there for us. Uh, minus 128 is the separator. Minus 128 times 3 times 8 is a separator. Um, and this separator is that thing that calls printf. So we are able to subtract values from the separator string. And what we're going to do is we're just going to subtract. It's Right now it's all underscores. We're just going to subtract values until it's a percent %p. And so then at the start of every menu print, it's just going to do a percent %p, and we can leak values. And like I said, once we have, all we need is a libc leak, because we have a buffer overflow um, that overwrites the uh, return address. And we, we were given libc, so we can do a one gadget, or just calculate the one address, or one gadget addresses, and just send that over, and that was it. Um, so really not too bad once you know what you're supposed to be doing. Um, if we look at the solve script, uh, it's a little messy, but all standard Pwn tool stuff, uh, connecting to remote. It's running in the background right now. Oh, it finished, cool. Um, some generic wrappers for creating an account, uh, support tickets, transferring. Uh, so like I said, right at the start, I'm going to create 135 accounts, I guess. Um, and I just name them username plus their ID. Like I said, eventually we're going to be doing that printf. Uh, and to do the printf right now, it's the separator is just a whole bunch of these underscores. And we want to change it to underscore percent %p, for example, um, because we want to leak some random value off the stack. Um, so to do that, uh, I think I did it the other way, uh, just because I found out it was bigger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, subtract this value from this value. So this is underscore, underscore, underscore. Uh, this is p, and then this is percent. It just has to be backwards because it's a string. Um, and then this is all underscores. So I take this value, and we're only given a balance of 35. So whatever this is, um, let me just calculate it real quick. 5 on 3. Uh, it is 4,000. Uh, we need to subtract 35, you know, 4,000 divided by 35 times, whatever that ends up being. Um, and so that way, uh, this string will be converted into this string. Um, once that's the true, uh, every time the menu prints, it's just going to leak out some random libc address. Uh, we're going to grab it. This is what it looked like on one of the runs. We're going to subtract the base of libc. So now we have a leak to the base of libc. Uh, and then from there, we just grab our one gadgets. Uh, there were three nice one gadgets. 
Um, I found out that uh, the second one, or the, the last one, the third one, I guess, uh, worked correctly. Uh, and so we're going to do the buffer overflow and create account. Um, like I said, oops, uh, uh in the um, create support ticket, uh, you can say which account does it, is there a concern with? Um, it's gonna load that account and then it's going to create this, uh, where is it, name pointer? I guess it's going on to name. Um, it's going to add your name to the end of this, but we can see it only has 40 bytes. And I think your name can be OX, can be 80 bytes or something like that. Um, yeah, 80 bytes, so something way bigger. So you have a, you definitely have a buffer overflow into this local stack variable. Um, and so from here, you can just collaborate with the stack. Uh, like I said, we're just going to, if you do a cyclic one gadget, you can eventually figure out you know where it is for, based off of the, uh, the value that's in the stack address when you return. Uh, when it crashes, it was RAA, and then we're just gonna add on our one gadget. Um, so we create the account, and then we open the support ticket with the ID of that account. Um, and that should be it. Then you call exit and return will be hit. Um, it actually does a return, which is nice. And then we get a uh, shell. Um, like I said, it takes a minute to run. I'm in Japan right now. Oh no, it closed. <laughs> All right, I'll let it run again. Uh, it takes a minute just because you can see every request takes a second and we need to make like quite a few hundred requests. And there we go. Um, so we can see we have shell and we can cut out the flag. IRCTF world-class customer support. So fun shell. And that is all the challenges I was able to solve. Like I said, I didn't have too much time. I did poke at memory, a uh, pretty fun uh, kernel challenge with an ioctal, and uh, somehow you're, gonna, you're supposed to get some sort of info leak when the kernel touches a piece of user memory. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that one's solved, but very excited to see the write-up for that one. And SQLitis was a crazy challenge where it turns out SQLite has a VM and you get to write uh, VM code uh, into a prepared statement. Also, uh, it sounds like a curse challenge, but it's super fun. Uh, I'll probably go back and probably solve all the challenges uh, after the CTF. I, I did that last year and I learned so much, and so I'll probably do it again this year. Uh, but thanks again to Iris for hosting, and uh, I will see you at the next CTF. Cheers.